The next operation, I think, is the kind of the, the very most common use of image blend. This is what people probably that have started to use it uh, perhaps do with it. You know, you have a starless image, you have a, the, the image of some stars, whether they are from the image itself or from some other source. In this case, you know, I have RGB stars, and then I have a narrow band image of the, uh, this uh, bug nebula. And you want to incorporate the two. Of course, you can use image blend to do this. Now, I will very quickly add, because in case Mike is listening or wants to comment, there is another script called Screen Stars. And it better uh, takes into account the fact that if you ever have stars that are embedded or within a very highly colored area, they're going to have that color bias. There's a way to extract the stars and put them back in, screen them in, unscreen them and screen them, that takes that color bias into account so the stars don't have that same bias. Um, I'm not taking care to do that here. The very simplest way is just to screen and unscreen. And for images that don't have a very colorful background, that's no problem at all, like your galaxies and things like that. Not really even a problem here. So let me show you how that works. We go back to script, image blend. Uh, it's often important, I have found, because I, it's easy for me to make mistakes. I'll always, always just reset the tool <laughs> so I know that I don't have some slider that might be in play. You can individually reset any of these items by hitting the little X here. But if I just hit the big reset, then everything goes back uh, to zero. And in this case, we'll use our base image to be the starless image. So here's the starless one. And then we come to our stars. That's not it. Uh, if you load in, and this is a good thing, if you load an image that uh, is a different ge uh, geometry, it won't let you, it'll complain. So I have forgotten what the name of, uh, oh, there it is. Nope, that's, yeah, here it is, stars. Yeah, so if you load an image that's not the same size, it will certainly complain, because how can it blend them? All right, so I have my stars here, I have the starless image, and we want to put them together. So we're gonna put them together with screen, so that's another one of the blending modes here. It's pretty much that simple, especially if you've already taken care to make the, the starless image and the stars look reasonable, um, reasonably good to begin with. Although I can show you that one of the operations that I often do is one that is a, uh, um, it's a nice technique. Sometimes if you have stars and a lot of them, you can use mask stretch to stretch the stars. But mask stretch does a pretty funny thing. Let me zoom in and show it to you. You can always tell when people use mask stretch or something or a very, very aggressive stretch because you'll see that the stars have these little cores to them, right? And then you see the halo around them. I, I think that looks ugly. I, I don't think that's right. I just think that that, I mean, stars have a, uh, you know, a drop off, an exponential drop off in brightness as you look at these uh, profiles, these PSFs. And that does not characterize that PSF. So what I like to do then is I will threshold the star's image in such a way by raising this, uh, you know, the lowering the white point. that I can fill in the brightness of those stars so I'm getting something that looks much, much more natural as far as the stars are concerned. Now, this might not be the final end all, but uh, much more natural. So that at the end of the day, when I show you something that isn't zoomed in 300%, it looks right. Rather than have those funny looking stars, all I have to do is just adjust the highlights, if you will, and just bring in those cores a little bit. Now, some people don't like it. That's fine, whatever. I think they're weird. Uh, but for me, that's the kind of star that, that I prefer.